Hi, I'm your host, Dee Dee Chang. Audio Builders TV presents Acoustics with Jay Fergoletto. This multi-part series is an overview of acoustic topics. For a more in-depth look, we highly recommend Jay Fergoletto's book and courses. Jay is an award-winning veteran mastering engineer who has owned high-end mastering studios in Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Boston. His clients have included Alice in Chains, Annie DeFranco, Oasis, India Ari, Black Eyed Peas, Blondie, In Excess, and many more. Albums that Jay has mastered have earned a Grammy Award, as well as gold and multi-platinum record awards. He is an accomplished pianist and multi-instrumentalist. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Audio Builders Workshop is a work group for the Boston chapter of the Audio Engineering Society. Hi, it's Jay Frigletto for Audio Builders TV, uh, continuing our series of talks on acoustics. Um, so we talked about the difference between large room and small room acoustics uh, having to do with the sort of modal behavior in the low frequencies. Very, very, very large rooms uh, where you have problems with uh, room modes causing uneven response uh, happens lower and lower and lower to the point when you get a, to the size of a concert hall that it's so low that it doesn't matter anymore. You get smaller rooms the size of a control room, a recording studio, even the recording space in a studio. Um, now you're getting up to around 300, maybe even 400 and above where the room response in the, that, that from you know 300 and down, 400 and down, uh, is very irregular due to the fact that you have room modes causing areas of constructive and destructive interference. You've got spots where uh, things are bunching up, getting too loud, things are disappearing, you're, you're getting these, these nulls that you can't hear that frequency at this particular spot in a room. Um, so let's talk about that sort of low frequency modal behavior in rooms. Um, so what happens? What causes a room mode? Um, again, we've talked a little bit about this, but the, um, when you've got boundaries, you've got walls, ceilings, things like that, that are uh, a distance, uh, and that distance is, uh, has a mathematical relationship to the actual wavelength of a particular sound. Um, you've got two walls, you've got a sound going this way, it bounces back and it starts bouncing between these two walls. Um, the frequency that happens to correspond to a half wavelength or a full wavelength or two times, three times, four times that distance, those frequencies are going to create a standing wave. It's called a standing wave because the areas of sort of the high pressure, low pressure areas stay in place. And what happens if when you've got the direct sound going this way and the reflected sound coming back this way, when you've got an area of a positive going from the reflection, mixing with a positive going from the direct sound, you're going to get this anti-node, this spot where you've got way too much energy there. Of course, the other problem is when you've got an area of low pressure from that reflection combining with an area of high pressure from the direct sound, well, that low pressure whoosh, is going to cancel out that energy. All of a sudden, that frequency is going to all but disappear in that location. Um, so when you get larger and larger and larger rooms, what happens is you start to get more and more and more modes. They're more uh, densely packed. Um, instead of having so many of these areas of too much, not enough, too much, not enough, they're all kind of all bunched up on top of one another and they kind of somewhat start to even each other out. That's when you get this sort of statistical sound field, this reverberant field. Um, you still get that above 300 or again 400, 500 sometimes. You get that reverberant statistical sound field uh, in small rooms above those frequencies, you get that irregular modal behavior below. Again, in big rooms, you don't get irregular modal behavior till very low. If you're in a concert hall, it could be below 30. Um, it could be, heck, 24, 22. Uh, if you've only got modal problems below 20 hertz, <laughs> there's nothing really happening down there that's in your music, so you don't have to worry about that. So. Let's talk about uh, these room modes a little bit. Um, so P 
piece of, people have called them different things over different times, uh, eigentones, permissible frequencies, natural frequencies, or just plain old room resonances, but room modes, uh, those are, are sort of the, the most widely used uh, these days uh, to talk about this standing wave phenomenon. So there are, think of, let's take a, the typical sort of rectangular room. Um, there are three sets of surfaces. There are, you know, side walls, front walls, floor and ceiling. You've got several different pair of surfaces. Um, the three kinds of room modes, you first have the simplest, the axial modes. These are when just one pair of surfaces is involved. It bounces between, you know, these two walls or the front back wall, or it could be the ceiling and the floor. Uh, the next is the tangential modes. These are when you have two pair of surfaces happening. So imagine it bounces off your side wall, then it hits your front wall, then it hits the other side wall, then it hits your back wall. You've got four walls, two pair of surfaces. There are also the most complex situation is the oblique modes, and that's where you have all six surfaces. You have three pair of surfaces. So then you've got sound going up, it hits that wall, then it hits that ceiling, then it comes down and hits that front wall, then it comes down and hits that wall, then it hits the floor, it hits the back. So you've got uh, oblique modes hitting everything. So these three kinds of modes. Um, the axial modes are gonna be the easiest to predict. These are the ones that uh, if you're sort of doing acoustics at home and figuring, hey, what do I need to treat you know, uh, for my listening position? If my front wall and back wall, uh, the half wavelength corresponds to this much distance. And again, we talked in an earlier talk about how to figure that out. Um, you know, the C celeratus, uh, the speed of sound, um, you know, over one of these items gives you the other. So C over the wavelength gives you the frequency, C over the frequency gives you the wavelength. Um, so, and again, remember to figure it out as a half wavelength. It's not just the wavelength of that distance, it's actually waves that are twice as long as that. So the half wavelength, that's gonna be your lowest axial mode. Um, and if you've got sort of a distance between your front wall and your back wall uh, of a certain amount, um, and you know, say the, uh, that's gonna create a standing wave at you know, 80 hertz or something. Um, well, if you're sitting in a particular point where there's a node, you're not gonna hear any 80 hertz and you're gonna be boosting that EQ. Uh, and then when you get it out of that room, you're going to be like, uh, ooh, wow, why is it so boomy? Why did I add all that stuff? Um, so these are the things that, that you're going to need to take care of. Um, in general, if you can, if you're not sort of designing, uh, having a professional designing this room, you're just trying to do some stuff yourself, some self-acoustics for your bedroom studio, your basement studio, whatever, making your practice space sound better, um, you want to do as broad band a trapping as you can in those low frequencies. Um, Trying to build a tuned trap can be difficult, and if you're aiming for 80 and the trap ends up at, you know, 86, you're out of luck. Uh, not to mention some of these tuned traps can re-emit, and what about all of the other problematic modes that are happening? What about some tangential or oblique modes that you didn't even figure? What about even just the multiples of that axial mode uh, from the half wave to the full wave to two times to three times to four times? Um, you need to try to get as broad band of bass trapping as you can just to try to knock out everything that's, you know, three to 400 and below. Let's try to trap that stuff up. Um, we're gonna talk again in another talk about how do you do that? That's the most difficult thing to absorb those low frequency sounds, that's tough. High frequency stuff, easy. Anything a little bit soft and fuzzy in the wall is gonna knock those out. Low frequency sounds, especially when they get to be very low frequency, that's tough. And uh, that's going to have to wait for another talk. Again, Jay Frigoletto for Audio Builders TV. We'll see you next time.